Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Byrne, and today I'm gonna to take you along on my very first time using a silicone mold with my clear acrylic resin pouring process. Now I had a few complications with the first one, it turned out not so bad, and I'm gonna walk you through those, and then I made two more because, you know, what the heck. So make sure you pop that subscribe button and ding the bell because I always got your best fine art tutorials and art biz advice. So for this process today, I'm just going to be using a regular run-of-the-mill silicone mold. It's listed online as 12 by 8 centimeters and is about a centimeter deep. And for the resin, I'm going to use the best of the best, art resin. It is the most expensive out there, but that is for a reason. I have found it really is the very best. And I've got an N95 mask just to keep out any fumes, although this has very low odor naturally. So first things first, I decided to just gather up some little inspiring bits and pieces and dried plants that I already have. Luckily, I've been doing these three-dimensional mixed-media oil paintings for a little while now, so I kind of have a tiny pretty object collection going already. So I just pulled a few things out and just sort of started placing them back and forth in the mold to see if I could come up with a pretty little composition. Um, as far as if you want to do this at home, really anything that is solid and stable and is not like going to wet, uh, be wet or leak or any of that works for resin molding. As long as it is more shallow than the mold is deep, you should be able to put it in your resin mold no problem. But today we're going to learn how. One of my favorite things to drop into any of my resin creations are leftover gold flake scraps from when I do gold leafing. So shiny. Okay, so just a quick note about the plant specimens I use. Everything that I use has been pre-dried and pressed and flattened. Um, some of it retains its nice green color and that's wonderful, I love it. But um, none of these are fresh. And what I have learned is that if you try to use fresh like flowers or leaves as tempting as it is, because I would love to be able to use like some fresh hibiscus flowers or something, um, what happens is that they will eventually get brown and decay within the resin so it won't look the same. And sometimes the moisture content within those um, non-pressed, non-dressed, non-pressed, non-dried flowers can actually damage the eventual outcome of your resin piece because the moisture can expand and contract in there and can actually make your, like the resin piece crack like weeks and months later. So um, when I'm using like these kind of things that I got in this weird bouquet, these are dry already, but they're not flat. What I thought was gonna make my life a little bit easier is if I went ahead and flattened them like in a notebook. So I'll be actually using this piece that I've already flattened. Um, and then, you know, just finding things that are not deep at all that are gonna work within the shape. But trust me, you definitely wanna start with things that are already dried or else who even knows what'll happen to your piece. Now, once it's time to start stirring the resin, it is serious business. You really need to get in the sides, get in everywhere, and do a full three minutes. No joke, if you leave any area unmixed, it is going to seriously compromise your success. So for the first experiment, I decided just to pour in the resin. I was working on another painting at this point, so I had a little extra resin. I poured in the resin, only filling the mold about halfway, and then I decided I was just going to press in my first objects while it was still totally wet like this. Now, do you see this little area where some of the resin went over the side and I did not clean it up? Yeah, that will come back to haunt me a little later. Just you wait. I do have a heat gun that I use for all my resin layer pouring, as well as a small blowtorch, but I was sort of nervous using the silicone for the first time, thinking I was going to melt it, so I barely used either of them, which also was going to come back to haunt me. I kind of figured that once I had popped the bubbles, at least what I could see, I could go ahead and lay this doily down on top. Hey, it's an experiment, okay? Here's the little safe spot I created to make sure no dust would get in while it was curing. Now the second day I went ahead and grabbed some clear drying glue so I could affix my second layer of ferns to the completely cured first layer of resin. Now you need to make sure that if you are ever going to do multiple layers of resin pour that you glue or affix whatever subsequent objects are going to be in there because if you don't and if you don't place them in the resin while they're tacky they will swim when you go to pour in that next layer. 
All right, so exciting. Now, the moment of truth. Remember, this is my very first time using a resin mold, so I really was not sure exactly how it was going to turn out. I mean, obviously, you see one side, but you know, you just never know if it's going to pop out all the way. And it did for the most part, except for that one little area. Remember, I told you about that? Yeah, I wound up struggling with that little corner a bit. So make sure that you always wipe off your edges because, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you're going to have a tug of war. Ta-da! I am so happy how it turned out. I really love the composition, if I do say so myself. I think it turned out really nicely. However, there are about a thousand million little tiny bubbles in this particular pour, which I definitely claim ownership for that. I was too nervous to use the heat gun and the blowtorch effectively. I was so scared I was going to burn the silicone, but I think I was just being too scared. And I really shouldn't have pressed those objects in while it was still totally wet like that but it's okay it was a learning experiment i'm really happy with this and i can't wait to show you the results for my other two. Oh yeah i almost forgot to mention so the first one did wind up damaging the silicone mold just a little bit you can see how there's like just this little bit of scraping area now i will say that the sides of the resin piece are completely smooth but somehow it puckered and kind of ripped a little bit of the corner but I figured since one mold was already messed up and it really is not a very much amount of uh, resin I have to use I figured I'd just try it again and see what happens when I reuse a slightly damaged mold better to know than not to know So for the second time around, I poured the first layer of resin and then let it set for about three or four hours. So this is actually one layer of resin about halfway full. I read online that you can press your objects into it while it's still mushy and gooey and then pour another layer on as many times as you want every like three to five hours. So I figured I would try this method instead. I thought that perhaps this might reduce some of the bubbles that I had caused the first time and this time let me tell you I didn't show it but I really let it have it with the uh, the torch and the heat gun and look at this I even pulled it up one time because I screwed up on the placement and I figured you know what this is an experiment I want to see what happens if you pull something up and make a big giant mess and then put it back down because I kind of have a feeling that it's going to be fine I just kind of figured as long as I smooshed it down a little bit and kind of tried to press out the bubbles as best as I could that everything would wind up okay in the end. And then here I've got, this is just a piece of foil from I think the top of a champagne bottle and a little bit of lace I cut down. Again, I really was not expecting much from this one. I was honestly expecting this to um, kind of rip in the corner and ruin the mold because I, the, cor the corner was ripped. I expected the resin to kind of leak through to some degree and mess it up. So I was just having fun, but you know, these are just found objects I have laying around the old Kaylee Bird crazy bin, I guess. <laughs> Like I said, with this one, I was not shy with the heat gun or the blowtorch, so I had high hopes as far as the clarity, but remember, I've never used release or anything on any of these, and this one had a tear in the corner, so I really did not know, honestly, if any of these were going to come out, and I was beyond pleasantly surprised. I mean, look at the clarity at this one. It's like as if it was pressed between two pieces of glass. It's incredible. There are a few tiny bubbles along the front of the ferns, but honestly, they are barely noticeable. You really have to be looking for it. I am thrilled with how well this turned out and the fact that the edges although they are a little bit rough in those few damaged areas everything else turned out beautifully no problems at all So for the third and final mold, I did sort of a mixture of the first two methods. I put in the gold leaf while the resin was still completely wet, the first layer, and then I really hit it with the blowtorch and heat gun. And then after it had dried for about four hours and was still mushy but set, I went ahead and squished in all the leaves, let that dry, and then put the second and final layer in there with a little bit more gold leaf. 
then 24 hours later once things were fully fully dried and cured I am pulling it out and I think this one was the best yet it was so clear so perfect I just can't believe how well these suit coming out I love the detail and honestly there's a tiny bit of bubbles in here but I think they look really cool so this last creation is probably the most special the fern is a resurrection fern found here in Florida which appear to die and come back to life through the rainy season so definitely a symbol of rebirth and then this leaf I found in Oahu and it is actually from a Bodhi tree are you familiar with a Bodhi tree legend has it that that is the type of tree the Buddha was sitting under when he reached enlightenment so between enlightenment and rebirth this is a pretty special art piece in case you're wondering, the answer is yes. I have these for sale in my art shop and will continue making more whenever I have the resin out to create my 3D paintings. I hope you guys learned a whole lot. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer about resin pouring or if you have any amazing or terrifying experiences you'd love to share, I definitely love to connect in the comments. Thanks for being here, guys. Pop that subscribe button and ding the bell. I'll see you next week.